Hi everyone, my name is Lab Loy Chong from the National Center for Research on Earthquake Engineering and from the Department of Civil Engineering, National Taiwan University and National Chenggong University. This is my name in Chinese, Zhong Li Lai. This is the presentation at the 15th East Asia Pacific Conference on Structural Engineering and Construction, ESEC 15, in Xi'an, China, on October 11 to 13, 2017. Today, today, I would like to share the experimental study on retrofit of building with external reinforced concrete frames. External reinforced concrete frames is added to the existing building in such a way that the existing building and the external reinforced concrete frames work together and resist the earthquake altogether. So that the seismic performance of the existing building can be upgraded. Existing buildings were designed and constructed according to the codes and guidelines at that time. From today's point of view, they may be vulnerable. Demolishment and or reconstruction is a solution to the problem. However, the number of existing buildings are so large that it is, it is impossible and impractical to demolish and reconstruct all existing buildings. Therefore, evaluation and retrofit is another alternative. Through evaluation, if an existing building is found insufficient in seismic performance, some retrofit measure can be taken to upgrade the seismic performance of the existing building. Here are photos of the common retrofit masses. Reinforced concrete jacket jacketing is to enlarge the cross section of the column. This is the original column. This is the column with reinforced concrete jacketing. Wind wall is added next to the column. Here is the original column. Here is the column retrofitted with wind wall at both sides of the column. Shear wall is infilled to the rainfall concrete frame. This is the original frame. This is the frame infilled with shear walls. The common characteristic of this, com this common retrofit masses is that to make the vertical members stronger in order to prevent the building from being collapsed. There are more than 26,000 school buildings for K-12 education. A program for seismic upgrading of school buildings was launched in 2009. After eight years of effort, about 90% of the school buildings were done. The count is more than 23,000 school buildings. Among them, 9,800 school buildings were excluded because they were built after 1999 Chichi earthquake. We believe that these buildings have better seismic performance. 8,100, more than 8,100 school buildings were qualified by evaluation, including preliminary evaluation and detailed evaluation. More than 4,500 school buildings were upgraded by seismic retrofit, including reinforced concrete jacketing, adding wind wall, or adding shear walls. More than 1,200 school buildings were demolished and or reconstructed according to the current design codes. The other common characteristic of this traditional method is that the operation of the building has to be suspended during construction. This is okay for school buildings because we have summer vacation and winter vacation. For some other category of school or buildings, 
such as hospital, operation of the building is not allowed. Therefore, we need some other retrofit methods. Adding reinforced concrete frame is one of the alternative. The reinforced concrete frame is connected to the existing building through slabs. And this is the existing beam of the existing frame. And this is the adding beam of the external reinforced concrete frame. Concrete frame. And they are connected by adding slab. One end of the slab reinforcement is, is, is embedded into the core concrete of the existing beam. And the other end of the slab reinforcement is anchored into the core concrete of the adding beam. In order to design the connecting slab, we have to know about the seismic demand and seismic capacity of the connecting slab. From pushover analysis, we have all storage shears of the adding frame. From the difference between the storage shear above the floor and below the floor, we can have the slab shear, which can be considered as the seismic demand for the connecting slab. Therefore, from pushover analysis, we can have the seismic demand of the connecting slab. Provided by ACI codes, we have the shear friction of the connecting slab. We also have the diaphragm shear of the connecting slab. Shear friction is contributed by the reinforcement transverse to the, to the earthquake direction. Time, diaphragm shear is contributed by the concrete and also the reinforcement along the, along the earthquake direction. And here is the upper bound for the shear friction, and here is the upper bound for diaphragm shear. From the lesser of shear friction and diaphragm shear, the seismic demand, the seismic capacity of the connecting slab can be assigned. Before moving along, we have two questions to ask ourselves. One is that is ACI code applicable to the connecting slab? That's the first question. The second question is, does post induration into the existing bar works or not. Therefore, we designed two specimens. One is EFB15. The interior beam is the existing beam. The two exterior beams are the adding beams. One end of the slab reinforcement is post-installed into the existing beam. The other end of the rein slab reinforcement is anchored into the adding beam. And the thickness of the slab is 15 centimeters. The length of the slab is 360 meters, uh, 60 centimeters. The width of the slab is 60 centimeters. And here's the second specimen. The slab is level to the top of the beam, so that the thickness of the slab is increased to 23 centimeters and the width of the slab is 240 centimeters. The length of the slab is 240 centimeters. The width of the slab keeps being 60 centimeters. And here is the specimen GFB15. There are two exterior beams. They are adding beams. They are mounted on the strong floor. The interior beam, the existing beam, is driven by actuators. And the, test and the test resulted into the relationship between slab force and slab displacement. The maximum shear strength of the slab is 562 ton force. And here's the result of EFB23. 
and the maximum shear strength of this specimen is 506 ton force. And this is summary of all the results. We have two specimens, ERP-15 and ERP-23. And here are the test results, 562-506 ton force. And this is the shear friction provided by ACI codes 168 ton force, 109 ton force. Here is the diaphragm shear provided by ACI code 291 ton force and 234 ton force. The lesser of shear friction and diaphragm shear are assigned to be the shear capacity of the slab. And then compare with the test result. Then we have the test result divided by the code result is larger than 3. That means that the test result is much larger than the results predicted by ACI code. Therefore, the seismic capacity predicted by ACI code is very conservative. They can be used for the design of the connecting slab. And in this presentation, the shear force of existing building is transferred to the external reinforced concrete building by slabs. The seismic demand of the connecting slab can be obtained from pushover analysis. And the seismic capacity of the connecting slab can be specified by ACI codes. Therefore, the method is feasible. By using this method, the operation of the building continues without interruption. Thank you. That's all for this presentation. See you next time. Bye-bye.